Okay, moving on to, let's talk about some of the gluten-induced autoimmune conditions that affect AI. So, so again, there's, there's two kind of things to think about here. Let me back it up, because these are gluten-induced eye diseases, typically through malnutrition, right? We get these types of problems. But this next category are autoimmune diseases that we know gluten can contribute to that will affect the eye. So think of this category as more indirect, whereas the other one was more direct, gluten-inducing malnutrition causing eye damage. This is more gluten-causing an autoimmune disease that can contribute to you know, damage to the eye or dysfunction of the eye in some way. So there are several different types of, of autoimmune processes that can occur, but probably the biggest one is right here. It's thyroiditis. So if you've ever had a diagnosis of Graves, which Graves is a form of hyperthyroidism, it's an autoimmune condition, but you could also have been diagnosed with Hashimoto's, and this is hypothyroidism. Both of these are autoimmune conditions. Um, it's just that they, they behave differently, whereas Graves, you're producing antibodies that mimic thyroid hormones, so it makes your thyroid overreactive, and Hashimoto's is when you're making antibodies that destroy your ability to make thyroid hormones, so your thyroid is underactive. In either one of those situations, you can get orbitopathies. Uh, one of the things that can happen is orbital myositis, which is where you start to see double vision because it's affecting the muscles in the eyes that help you focus so we can get double vision. You can also get orbitopathy. If you've ever seen, particularly in Graves' disease, you see the big, it's called exophthalmia. But it's a bulging eye. So when the eyes are bulging out, almost looks like, like frog's eyes, the way they bulge out of their head. The bulging eyes are kind of a hallmark or classic symptom of Graves' disease. So if, uh, and, and so if that's happening to you and you've had that diagnosis, this is, again, one of the ways that gluten can induce an autoimmune condition that can impact your vision and impact your eyes. There's another uh, situation or condition, or, or actually more than one, autoimmune disease, and that is Reiter's syndrome. And in the same family, you know, with Rider syndrome, you also have diseases like um, psoriatic arthritis and uh, another condition called ankylosing spondylitis. These are the, part of the family of autoimmune arthritis. So these are forms of arthritis that can also affect the eye. And it's, it's common manifestation in riders particularly because it can affect your joints. It can affect the bladder, but it can also affect the eye. I actually had, one time I had a patient who came to see me. They were, the, the doctor, she had uveitis, so her eyes were inflamed. She was getting ready to lose her sight. They were injecting steroids into her eyeball to tamper down the inflammation. And I've seen this happen in a number of cases. But in her case, it was a gluten-induced writer's disease, right? It was inflaming the eye to such an extent that uh, the doctors were injecting steroids into the eyeball to mitigate the inflammation. Again, you know, can't do that forever. Steroids are a bad deal. We'll talk about why in a minute. It's not that steroid can't be helpful once, uh, but when you get into that habit of needing them repetitively over and over again, they have their side effects. They have their problems that come with it, including immunosuppression. But this is a, remember, this is a food. This is gluten, right? So we can change the diet and we can change the outcome of these arthritis, and then subsequently we can change the outcome of the secondary and tertiary effects of these arthritis, which is damage to the eye, UV, to the to the uveitis, uh, damage directly to the eye itself. So, um, somebody was mentioning in the feed earlier. I saw this. They were talking about they had a genetic marker, or their or their son or their child had a genetic marker for this, and there is a genetic marker for these this family of arthritis. It's called HLA-B27. So sometimes doctors will measure HLA-B27 in the blood. It's a genetic marker. And if it's positive, if you have HLA-B27 positivity, then you have an increased risk for the development of this family of conditions. Um, and that's, 
you know, that's why a lot of doctors will measure that. Now, now, if you've ever heard me talk about the genetics of gluten, there's a similar gene as the HLA DQ genes that we measure have to do with gluten sensitivity. And you notice HLA is the, is the common theme here. HLA stands for human leukocyte antigen. And these are receptors or antennas that stick off of the surface of your white blood cells. And uh, there are a number of genetic uh, uniquenesses about these receptors that actually diet can influence in a good way. And that's, that's a good thing because if we didn't know how to change our diet, we, we would just be subject to the steroids, to the immunosuppressants and the standard of care that medicine brings into the field of autoimmune disease. So um, uveitis, major, major side effect in terms of certain autoimmune conditions. And then brain and occipital calcification, um, there's certain autoimmune inflammatory diseases where we can get this problem. And if that happens around the cranial nerve, uh, around, the, um, around your eye, your optic nerve, those blood vessels can get calcifications and then you get reduced blood flow to the eye. And so over time that starts to impact and damage vision as well. So these are all potential for autoimmune disease that gluten can contribute to. And so again, the super, the super takeaway here, <laughs> the rich takeaway is you can avoid gluten, right? Um, to me, it would be far more painful to lose my ability to see uh, than it would to be to change my diet. So um, some people, that's the way gluten impacts them through the eyes. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.